husband, father, college educated, hard working. But that's really just that's the, the tip of the iceberg, I would say, because I can just tell, and not only from the three of you, but from everyone who appeared today in support of Drake's family and those of you who, you know, very clearly loved him and cared about him very much, none of that is lost on me. And I do hope that today will in some way bring some closure because I'm very aware of the fact that there's nothing that I can do on this bench that is going to bring your loved one back. But I just hope that coming down today, witnessing the sentencing, addressing the court, that that will in some way allow the healing process to begin. And I do thank you for that. And I do want to say to you, Mr. Scales, um, I appreciate your comments today as well as the comments of your parents. But, you know, after sitting through the trial and reflecting on the trial and, you know, really seeing the verdict, just reflecting on everything, the question that I kept, I kept coming back to is, why did you not just go home after the house? I mean, I just think that it's... The, the chain of events that was put into play within the 30 seconds or so outside of Uncut forever changed the lives of DeAndre Rome, the lives of Mario Gay, and the lives of Johnny Walker, as well as the lives of their friends and family, as well as the lives of your friends and family, and certainly your life. No one's life will ever be the same. And I believe it was Miss Taylor when she was speaking was talking about choices. And this case really does boil down to choices and choices that were made by you that night that have caused irreparable harm. Before imposing sentence, the court notes for the record it has considered the record, the oral statements made here today, as well as the victim impact statements presented in court. The court must be formulate its decision based upon the overriding principles and purposes of felony sentencing, namely to protect the public from future crime by the defendant or others, and to punish the offender using the minimum sanctions that the court determines accomplish those purposes without imposing an unnecessary burden on the state or local government resources. To achieve these purposes, the court has considered the need for incapacitation, deterrence, rehabilitation, and providing for restitution. The court must and has also considered the seriousness and recidivism factors relevant to the offense and offender pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 29-29-12. The court must and has ensured that the sentence being imposed does not demean the seriousness of the crime and the impact it had on the victim and is consistent with other similar offenses committed by like offenders. Finally, the sentence is not based upon any impermissible purposes, namely the race, ethnic background, gender, or religion of Mr. Scales. Mr. Scales, do you understand all of that, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And just for the record, Ms. Carpet, the state is electing to sentence on count 2, 6, 7, 12, and 13. Is that accurate? That is correct, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, first with respect to count two, the sentence will be life in prison with parole eligibility after 15 years. Additionally, the court does impose a 54-month firearm specification to be served prior to and consecutive with the 15 to life on the underlying. With respect to count six, The court does impose a prison sentence of 11 years. That base sentence of 11 years will be served concurrently with the sentence of 15 years to life. In that count, the court does also impose a 54-month firearm specification that must be served prior to and consecutive with the 11 years on the base 
that 54-month specification will also run consecutively to the 54-month specification on count two. With respect to count seven, the court imposes a prison sentence at the Lorraine Correctional Institution of 11 years. The 11 years on that base count will run concurrent with the 11 years on count six, as well as the 15 years to life on count two. The court additionally imposes a 54-month firearm specification on count seven, which must be served prior to and consecutive with the 11 years on the base count. And additionally, that 54 months will be served consecutive with the firearm specifications in count six and count two. With respect to count 12, the court imposes a prison term at the Lorraine Correctional Institution of eight years. That eight years will be served concurrently with the 11 years on count seven, as well as the 11 years on count six, and the 15 years to life on count two. Additionally, the court imposes a 54-month firearm specification in count 12, which will be served consecutively with all other 54-month firearm specifications. Lastly, the court imposes on count 13 a sentence of three years at the Lorraine Correctional Institution, which will be served concurrently with the sentences on counts two, six, seven, and 12. So that is a total term of imprisonment of 33 years to life. I do need to advise you, Mr. Scales, given your sentence on the murder, if and or when you are released from prison, you will be supervised by the Adult Parole Authority, and that supervision will control. But I do need to advise you that you are subject to post-release control on the other charges as well. On the felony one, it will be a mandatory minimum of two years up to a maximum of five years. On the felony two, it's a mandatory minimum of 18 months post-release control up to a maximum of three years. And lastly, on the felony three, it is up to two years at the discretion of the parole board. Additionally, Mr. Scales, do you understand that you have the right to appeal this matter within 30 days after the filing of the court's sentencing entry? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand that if you are unable to pay for the cost of the transcript, the record, and all relevant documents required for an appeal, they will be provided to you at no cost? Yes, Mr. McDonald. I'm going to go ahead and move to the court now, but we would like to inform Mr. Scales to be appointed with the appellate counsel as he is currently indigent, so we can't make a request. Or I'll take this back. Thank you very much. At this point, I will appoint appellate counsel for you. I will appoint attorney Max Martin to represent you should you choose to appeal the court's decision today. Additionally, you will be credited with 635 days. I will waive your court cost. And sir, truly, I do wish you the very best of luck. Is there anything else on behalf of the state of Ohio? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else on behalf of the defense? Just to clarify, the court is not imposing any type of financial fine. Correct. Fines and costs will be waived. Okay, thank you very much. Defendant is remanded. We are off the record. Thank you.